Hey, hey, everybody, it's Friday. Time for Facebook Friday. I'm back on schedule this week, and I've got three new projects for you. This week is all about the gift bag punch board, which is just a fabulous tool, and I'm gonna show you three different ways to use it. Hello, I see some of you guys jumping on. The good news is, is that my internet provider sent somebody out. He replaced everything. And then he told me to go out and buy new routers. <laughs> he said, theirs were all right, but if I went and bought something called Google Mesh, that I would be much happier. So let's see how it pans out today, all right? It looks so far, it looks good to me, it looks better. Even while he was here, I did a practice live. And he was like, hmm, yeah, that doesn't look so good. But hopefully, Today is better. Hello, everybody. Thanks so much for joining me. All right, good. I can see you. You can see me. Um, so this week, I want to make sure I can see all your comments. This week is all about this guy, the gift bag punch board. Love it. Um, we used it on Tuesday to make a bag, and that's when we had the worst internet ever, right? But if you didn't get to watch it, check out the replay. I think the replay, the recording is better. Um, that shows you how to really just use it to make a bag. So today I'm going to show you how to make a bag with a flap and a box and an envelope with it, okay? So before we get started, while we're waiting for everybody to get here, I want to tell you a few things. Um, the new in colors are coming June 4th. Here they are. All right, here they are. My lighting is weird today. Hmm, looks a little weird. Anyway, um, my In Color Club starts in June, so if you are interested in joining the In Color Club, you can sign up all month. Um, you don't have to do anything until June 1st. I'll send you an email and let you know what, what you will do the first month. Each month I'll send you a pack of all of one color. So um, Rococo Rose, you'll get the marker, the blends, the cardstock, the ink pad, the re-inker, um, the ribbon, I'm trying to think of what else is there, um, the designer series paper, and you will get a free embellishment to go with it. So then by the end of the five months, you'll have all five colors. You'll have everything that coordinates. So if you're interested in that, you can find that link on my blog um, and you can sign up for that. Also, if you go click on today's PDF, it's right here. There's a link right there. Now right under there, I want you guys to notice there's no graphic for this next bit. I haven't gotten there yet. I have a lot of balls in the air right now trying to get everything posted and listed and organized so I don't have a graphic for it but it's the paper share and the ribbon share now I don't have all the new papers yet um, we can't order all of them as a demonstrator I can order some of them but not all of them so here are some of them and this year I am doing my paper share a little bit different than I normally do usually I do 6 by 12 you get half a sheet of all of them and this year you can still get half a sheet, but I'm also going to offer just a six by six option um, to keep the price down. And the reason why I do paper shares is it gives you an opportunity to get a little bit, a sample of every single new designer series paper. And this time there's even some foil in there too. Um, and it's a great way to kind of get your hands on all of it at once without having to buy all the packs of paper. And then you can kind of play with it and decide which paper you love the most, and which ones you want full packs of. So this year, two options, six by 12 or six by six. And of course the six by six option is going to be half the price of the six by 12 option because it's half the size. Um, then the second option is the ribbon. You'll get a yard of all the new ribbons. And if you buy both the paper and the ribbon share, I'm gonna send you an embellishment for free when I ship these out to you, okay? So you can sign up for this, the paper or the ribbon share. Again, there's no graphic for it yet. I'm gonna work on that at some point, maybe between two and 3 a.m. <laughs> um, but right here at the bottom of today's PDF, there's a link that will take you right there, okay? Um, if you have questions about that, let me know. And you don't have, you can sign up between now and I'll close it um, on the evening of June 3rd, okay? Um, so you have all the way until June 3rd to sign up if you wanna think about it. Um, I don't know, the light is distracting me today. I replaced some light bulbs and it seems like they're extra bright. 
So the Everything is Rosie. Did you guys get to watch my video from yesterday? The Everything is Rosie Sweet is here. And you know what? I think I'm going to turn the camera around because I want you to see it and what I have created with it so far. Um, before I do turn the camera over, let me also tell you that the tutorial bundle for April, nope, where are we? May, tutorial bundle for May is out. I posted it, we did a blog hop yesterday. Um, it has 12 tutorials. I do these every month with these other awesome ladies. We all type up a tutorial um, for some, any kind of project. There's cards, there's 3Ds, and then we combine them and we all offer them free with a $50 order, or you can buy it in my PDF store for $15. So it's out, the new one, and here's my project, although it looks like it's been through the ringer. Let's see, it's a little gift card box. So it holds candy and a gift card, and it's very cute. So check that out, go back to yesterday's post at pinkbuckaroo.com and you'll find it, all right? All right, I'm gonna flip the Camera, no, no, let's do prizes first. I keep changing my mind. Let's do prizes first. I have prizes from last week. If you share the video, you're entered into a prize drawing. And if you go over to my blog and enter your information on the widget um, on today's post, you're entered for a prize. So last week's winners are Mike Cruz and Cindy Kang. I have both of your shipping information, so don't worry, I'm just gonna send it to you, okay? Betsy, you're getting on an airplane, are you going somewhere fun? I hope you are, and I hope you have headphones and not everybody's listening to me. <laughs> okay, so congratulations, Mike and Cindy. Um, was that right? Yeah, that was right. And then I have another one for sharing my video on Tuesday, Suzanne Hinton. Hinton, I have your mailing information too, I believe. That's not right, it's Teresa Hinton. I wrote that out of my memory. I believe it's Teresa Hinton. Anyways, I'll find you. I'll send it to you. You know who you are. That's for sharing my video. Thanks for sharing. Okay, this week I've got two really, really good prizes. All right, needle and thread. Not just the stamp set, but the framelits also. I've got two of them. One will go to somebody who shares the video and one who will go to somebody who enters the widget over on my blog, okay? Catherine, you're having trouble. I'm sorry, I hope it's not the internet. I hope it's not. I hope it's just Facebook. Because I invested some money in my internet this week. Let's just say that it better work. Okay, I'm going to flip you guys around. Oh, Donna, you're so sweet. I um, use the host rewards or the stamp and rewards from y'all's Facebook Friday orders to order the prizes. So thanks to you guys, we get the prizes. We get good prizes. All right, so here we are. Sorry. No, it was just not refreshing. Oh, Catherine, okay, good. Don't tell me I bought the Google Mesh and it's not working. Good grief. I, I don't live in the country. I live in a suburb, but it's kind of out towards the country, and so we don't have a lot of internet options. And so I gave them grief yesterday. I was like, look, you guys, you gotta help me out. Here's the Everything Rosy product suite. Nope, product medley, that's what it's called. It comes in one box. We looked at it yesterday when it arrived. If you didn't get to see that video, go back and watch because I unboxed all of it. And it's all this beautiful paper. It's the equivalent of a full pack of 12 by 12 and a pack of 12 by 12 foil. You've got the stamp set, you've got the framelits, um, you've got two full bolts of ribbon, the um, rose gold shimmer paint, which I haven't used yet. And then you've got these die cuts and the embellishments. So as you can see, I've gotten three projects made. The fourth one is actually in being made right now over on my counter. Um, I'm gonna type up a PDF and the PDF will be free for anybody who orders the Everything is Rosie uh, product medley from me in May, okay? So if you've been on the fence about it, go back and watch yesterday's video and look, hopefully this weekend I can get it out, um, this PDF so you can see um, the projects I'll have. I'm shooting for five maybe six, we'll see, but it'll be free for anybody who orders it, okay? Um, and if you use the host code again, you'll get the, that free PDF, the all-star PDF, and today's make and takes for free. That's quite a bit of free stuff this week, quite a bit. Okay, I'm cleaning my table off, we're almost there, we're almost there. If you have not joined me for Facebook Friday before, I always give the make and takes for free. Um, I send them to anybody who places a minimum $30 order using this host code by 
Monday at midnight, okay? And it comes to you like this. It's all packed in envelopes or bags. Um, the You have a link to the recording. I make you a little tag, and it comes free in the mail. I send them on Wednesdays the following week. So if you'd like today's make and takes, if you are going to buy the gift bag punch board or you already own it and you want these, just make sure you put in an order by Monday at midnight using that host code. I also have a PDF here. I've kind of showed you that already. It has everything that we're going to use, all the items in case you're wondering um, what I'm using and then if you want to um, order it, the item numbers are there. There's also measurements here. Today's project's measurements are weird just because we're using them on the punch board. Um, but you'll see, you'll see how it goes. You'll need some of that information if you're going to recreate these. And then here are my two to-go classes. Um, for May, the watercolor technique class and the cactus flowering desert class, and they will ship together. Okay, okay. Um, there's the link. I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm distracted because I'm trying to think of the deadline and I can't remember it now. I think it's May 17th. Here's the details. If you're going to place an order, there's the postcode. Okay, I am done. I am ready. We are ready to stamp. I did that faster than I thought I was going to do it. Okay, so let me just double check. Yep, I can see you guys. You know, I was going to share my video over to my other page. Let's see if I can figure out how to do that without too much disruption. Okay, there we go, done. So the gift bag punch board is retiring. As you guys know, hopefully, Stampin' Up! retires the annual catalog on June 3rd. Here it is, it's retiring. And every year about this time, they put out the list of the things that will not be in the next catalog. And there's always quite a bit of, of things. And this year they're retiring their gift bag punch board as well as the envelope punch board. And so I had to dedicate one of our Facebook Fridays to the gift bag punch board because um, like I mentioned on Tuesday, to me it's a lot easier to use than the other punch boards. I feel like I'm always successful, knock on wood, hopefully we'll be successful today, but I do generally feel like I am always successful when I use the gift bag punch board. Many years ago when it first came out, I did a class um, and I have a PDF in my PDF store and I pulled some of these projects from that PDF. Of course, we've changed the way that they looked and some of the, some of the sizes, but these are straight from that PDF. I spent a lot of time back then kind of researching other uses for it because I like when we have something that I can use for its intended purpose but also for other unintended purposes like framelits and punches any of the tools I like to figure out other ways to use it so that's what we're going to do today and I have pulled three different retiring stamp sets too for us to use so you can kind of visually see what's leaving and see if there's anything that you can't live without Okay, so this is what I'm calling a report card envelope. And if you look down here, you'll see that this is rounded right here. All right, and then it just slides out and you could slide a gift card in there if you want, or it can just be a card and that's the envelope. All righty, we are using Pretty Kitty. I can't believe Pretty Kitty and Bella and friends are retiring. They are just the cutest, um, sweet little sets, but you know, out with the old and with the new. We've got some newer cat and dog um, sets that are just as cute. But I really like Pretty Kitty with my blends, you know, using it with my blends. Okay, let's look at my PDF and see what I'm using. <laughs> Let me remind myself. Grapefruit Grove is the color. This is one of our continuing on in colors. And this cardstock is 10 by six and a half inches. Before we use the gift bag punch board, we're actually going to score it on our Simply Scored. And I'm gonna score the long side at two and a half and six and three fourths. All right, now you guys know that Typically, when it's not crazy May and crazy April, I record these ahead of time. I didn't do that this week, so fingers crossed that all my measurements are correct. <laughs> Let's hope, because when I record a clean recording ahead of time, I can fix all that and tweak it when I do something that's incorrect. Because, you know, it happens, it happens. Okay, now I'm gonna take my scoring tool that comes with my gift bag punch board, and I'm gonna go all the way across like that. See how it made that horizontal score line. Then I'm gonna take this, this is the, the scoring, 
I know it has an official name and I can't remember what it is. Let me look. I I have it in my PDF and I was impressed with myself that I had written it, but now I can't even remember what it is. The little, the little pointer, the little pointer. Okay, we'll call it the pointer. I'm gonna punch it. I'm gonna line it up with that score line. I'm gonna punch it. And then I'm gonna line it up with this score line. And I'm gonna punch it. And then that's all. That's all we need to do for this one. So let me move that out of the way. And now you're gonna need your trimmer. You know, I haven't checked in the last couple days. Is the trimmer still available? It's retiring, it's leaving. I don't know if it's still, it's while supplies last. So I don't know, I haven't checked. I'm gonna cut out, cut off these outside flaps like this. Oh good, Donna, you know it can be confusing and I always have to kind of slow down and think about what I'm doing when I use these punch boards. It's one of those you can't just kind of go through the motions. You have to really stop and focus. Okay, now what am I doing? But it really is uh, pretty simple. All right, so see how we've got that left? So basically what that did is it rounded those edges and made them cute like the, the little report card envelopes. Surely I'm not the only person who had report cards that came in little envelopes like this. My kids still have envelopes that, I mean, report cards that come in envelopes like this. All right, we're gonna fold that one up like that. And there you go. Now, I need to get the circle punch, which I forgot to grab, two inch circle punch. And I'm just going to punch, I'm gonna line it up. Now, if you wanna be perfect take your ruler and make a mark right there in the middle and line it up with that line right there but i'm gonna eyeball it pretty good pretty good now i that feels pretty wide there to me hmm, i don't know where my sample is we'll go with it this is designer series paper from the in color stacks i just cut a sheet of it in half and i'm gonna i just um, adhered it end over end so now we have a long piece all right and I'm gonna take and I actually think and I meant to do this before I actually think it's too long this way yep see we need to cut off about hmm let's look at that and see exactly what it is so I can correct the PDF because I don't even think I put this on the PDF let's cut that down how much did we cut off two inches so really you need a three by six inch and a four by three inch. Don't worry, I'll add it. And we're gonna just wrap it around like a belly band. But before I do that, before I do that, we're gonna do it like that. We've gotta add these little butterflies. We're gonna use this cute image in Pretty Kitty where she's looking at the butterfly on her tail. So I thought, well, we of course need to use Butterfly Gala, which is not retiring. Woo woo, it's gonna be in that new catalog, yay, because it's so popular. All right, so I'm gonna stamp it just tone on tone, Grapefruit Grove, ink on Grapefruit Grove cardstock, and see how I'm just kind of rotating my butterflies so they look like they're flying in different directions. And I don't need to worry too much about that middle section because we're gonna cover that up with paper, all right? Now, let's take that, what ended up being about three by, it's probably about three by nine and a half because we overlapped it. I'm gonna start right here in the middle and I'm gonna fold it over. It looks like a belly band, but we are attaching it straight to the back because it doesn't need to slide off. All right, there we go. And if you wanna put your butterflies on the back, go for it, do it. Now, let's do our little pretty kitty. I'm gonna use Stampin' Blends, and you know what? I am using Stampin' Blends on every single project today. Hey, Lisa, no worries, no worries. All right. Now, this stamp set is in clear mount. See how it doesn't have my sticker on it? Our new red rubber stamps will be in cling, cling mount in the new catalog. Cling mount, 
just means it looks the same, but the stickers are way better and they are stickier. So you can actually put your stickers on your stamps and they will stick to the block. You'll probably notice a lot of demonstrators don't even put their stickers on because the old clear mount, which is what this is, the stickers have a hard time sticking to the block. Now, just in case, I'm gonna heat hit this with a heat tool. Um, typically, I don't need to do this, but when I use light colors, I like to just make sure everything is dry. Now we use Memento Black when we're using Stampin' Blends. Don't use Stays On Black because it will go crazy and it will smear. Let's see how well I do standing up. I don't like to color standing up. Hey everybody, thank you so much. <laughs> Catherine, she says, why do my phone calls all come in when I'm trying to watch a live? Well, I can ask, why does my UPS man always come? when I am doing a live or, you know, I try to remember to turn my phone on do not disturb when I'm doing a live, but I don't always remember. Now I'm using light pumpkin pie and I'm just gonna do like a full coat all over our little pretty kitty. So light pumpkin pie, I am using the bullet tip because that's just my preference. I um, feel like I'm a whole lot messier when I use the brush tip. So I save the brush tip for big areas. Now I'm gonna take my dark pumpkin pie and I'm just gonna add some color around the back, under his ear and inside his ear. And then I'm gonna take my light and I'm gonna pull that color in. This is how you blend it in. And the, he would be light up here, I think that the, the light would be coming down on his face. The top of his ear there would be light, and then the fit his face would be light. Underneath his chin would be a little dark. Now I'm gonna take the dark and go very carefully around this little bow. There would be shadow there. There would also be shadow right here behind his, his hip, and down here in his chest, and then kind of along the bottom. So I've just added some dark there and I'm just going to go back with my light and blend it all together, blend it all in. All right, there we go. All right, not bad for a cute kitty. Let's see, I don't remember what my colors were. Let me look. Okay, I'm going to take dark flirty flamingo. And I have no idea, I tell you guys, every time we do any kind of flower, I have no idea what it is. I have no idea if these are recognizable flowers or just made up flowers. Let's see, we're gonna do that butterfly and flirty flamingo also. And I'm not gonna try to get fancy with a shading on things this small. We're just gonna color them in. You guys are so good, I keep seeing all these little hearts and thumbs up, thank you. That's very sweet of you. Now we don't have Grapefruit Grove um blends but the light pumpkin pie is pretty close and it coordinates well with pumpkin pie anyway so i'm just going to use light pumpkin pie for these flowers and then i'm going to take a light granny apple green and i'm going to color in those leaves oops i forgot to do his little bow then i'm going to just take this green and I'm just gonna make a like a baseline so that they're not just floating in space. All right, we're gonna add just kind of some little grass like that under him. Now, if you take your dark granny apple and just go right under him a little bit, that's gonna offer that shadow that his little body would be presenting if it was sunny. Of course, here it's gloomy and yucky. So we wouldn't have a shadow probably. But we're gonna pretend like it's a sunny day. Hi, Michelle. Thank you, Debbie, that's very sweet. Oops, I don't wanna use that end. Especially on something this tiny. I'm gonna go back with his bow with Flirty Flamingo. I love Flirty Flamingo and Grapefruit Grove together. It's one of my favorite color combinations. Okay, there. Now, 
Of course, we're going to add this on with two dimensionals. So you guys, how does it look? Is it, um, it's looking a little grainy to me. I don't know. Um, who just asked me that? Let's see. Mary, I'm glad you asked me this. This is a stitched rectangle. I forgot to mention that. Let's measure it. It is two, about two and a half, maybe two and five eighths by three and seven eighths. And it probably could stand to be a little bit smaller, maybe one of the smaller ones. Now this piece of white is going to fit in here. Oh, if I would cut it the right size, let me trim it down. This is going to fit in here and it's going to slide out and it should, the envelope should be four and a fourth by five and a half, which is a normal size card. I think I cut this to four and a fourth by, yep, five and a half. So this needs to be just a little bit smaller so it will go in. Let's see. There we go. Yep, see? So cute. Okay, now we've got, this sentiment has two parts. We put, hope your birthday is just like you. And then on the inside, we're going to put wonderful in every way. See how it has a little dot, dot, dot? That means it has two parts. All right, now I have a piece of designer series paper somewhere. Do you guys see it? Did it run away? I haven't even used it. Good grief. All right, well, if you don't lose your designer series paper, that's so odd because I saw it when I started. You, let's just see this one. See right here, I just put a little piece of paper across the bottom, a little bit of that DSP. And if you put, see how you can make it like to hold a gift card right there. Wouldn't that be a fun little treat for somebody? Now let's put this in here. It looks good. Okay, good, thanks guys. All right, now last but not least, of course we need a bow and of course Stampin' Up! has ribbon exactly the color that matches our cardstock exactly so let's put that on there this is the one eighth is it one eighth or a quarter i can't remember let's see what did i write down oh, it's one eighth inch that just seemed really small it is narrow grow grow grain ribbon in all the this year's in colors and this ribbon will be in the new catalog too. Yay! All right, so there you go, there you have it. You can see this one's smaller, just a bit, because I made this one too big. So I made it a little bit smaller. I like it smaller, that way. You could really make it any size you want. Length, or, um, see it's the same width. It's a little bit wider, I don't know how I managed that. Anyways, there you have it, what do you guys think? Fun little way to make an envelope, for sure. You could do all kinds of things. Invitations would be fun that way. If you love Pretty Kitty, you gotta get it. It's retiring. Um, the stamps are guaranteed through, um, what is it, May 25th, I believe. So they're guaranteed to stay in stock because Stampin' Up! actually makes those right in their own warehouse. So we don't have to worry about the stamps running out, but everything else, any of the retiring tools and embellishments and paper, they are while supplies last, so you don't wanna wait on those. Okay, we're moving on. This one is Flirty Flamingo again, and this is, we're using this really cute stamp set called Best Birds. It has coordinating framelits, and these two birds, you don't even have to stamp, you can just cut them out of cardstock, and they are textured. See how it has those little lines? They're textured and, and kind of cut a little bit so that they keep the, um, the shape and all the details on it. So you can stamp or you could just cut. I really like this set. It's been around for a while. Every time I look at it, I think about, I made these cute notebooks years ago um, for my team and I used that on it and it was so cute. But that's probably the last time that I used it. I wish I had used it more. All right, we're gonna make this little bag. This bag has a, a flap that folds over, okay? So it's different from um, the bag that we made on Tuesday. Here's Tuesday's bag. See how it's open at the top? This one has 
the flap that folds over and you can see this one is a small and that is a medium so the directions if you want to make different gift bags are right on the gift bag punch board you can read them right here and if it's confusing to you just google it just go to youtube and type in gift bag punch board and you will find a plethora of videos all right so we're going to start with a piece of flirty flamingo flirty flamingo um cardstock that is 10 by seven and a half all right and we're going to score on the punch board using the small line um, these are the the lines that indicate what size bag you want so small medium and large and this is the side where you will score the sides of the bags all right so we're going to start let me get this out right here we're going to start and i because i can never remember to do it i am just going to score my line horizontally all the way across do that ahead of time then you won't have to worry about forgetting each time and we're going to line it up right here with our little marker and we're going to punch and we're going to score at small okay now slide always stopping at the score line punch now that was the front now let's do the side so come to the side marker and the side also has these little triangle lines here so that we'll have pleats in the side of our bag okay so now slide and punch so we did the front the side now this is the back so we're going to go back to the small line and slide punch again and now we need one more side so go to the side line and then score those three triangular lines there in the middle and one more time we're going to slide it over and punch okay so that's what it looks like now to make that flap we're just going to turn it over and well if i can get it to slide good grief i'm going to slide it and make that horizontal line again now i'm going to decide which one is going to be the back side of my bag it's one of it's either one of these and it really doesn't matter um, i'm going to just do the first one and i am going to punch there see how it rounded that i'm going to slide it to the first line and punch there okay see how that looks now we don't have to worry about the rest because we're going to cut it all off so let me bring my trimmer back and put line up your lines right there in the gutter and get your cutting blade and cut everything else off like that okay that makes sense now cut this weird guy off this random end skinny tab and i like to cut my side tabs off at an angle all right so let's go ahead and burnish get my bone folder hello michelle thanks you guys paula i love that everything coordinates too it just takes all the guesswork out of it doesn't it all right now once you've got all of these burnished i'm still going through my fast fuse you guys you know that i've told you that i have enough fast fuse to last me until there's an apocalypse or something actually i'm getting almost i'm getting towards the bottom believe it or not so i'm using fast fuse but if you don't have fast fuse use tear and tape that is the best adhesive for this so you put your adhesive there on that long side and then if you just fold it in half those lines will match up perfectly like that and you've got a box but because we scored those sides there remember those little triangle lines that we did it's going to pinch and make a pleat perfectly Ooh, and i forgot to stamp it so we gotta we gotta flatten it out before we put it all the way together all right so we're going to put it together the same way we did on oh and i have the wrong color the same way we did on tuesday and I have Calypso Coral ink for some reason, but this is Flirty Flamingo. So I'm going to take this little flower that is from the birds and, no, best birds, <laughs> not birds and bees. Birds and blooms is what the framelits are called. All right. So there we go. And I'm just doing the front. 
And then I'm going to do the little flap over too. And of course, you can do all four sides if you want, but I'm just, for time's sake, we're going to make it easy. Okay, now when I fold up my bottoms, I want this, the front flap on the bottom to be the last one so we have that smooth edge. So I'm going to put in the sides first and I'm going to add my adhesive to that back flap and I'm going to fold it up, get my hand in there and smush it in. Okay, see how that is? And then we will put some, adhe whoops, some adhesive there and there we have it. And then it folds over like that. These would make beautiful little um, bridal shower favors. Could you see all these like on a table and everybody could take one? So pretty, right? They would also make great teacher treats, teacher appreciation week. Here is next week. So if you have a teacher, you gotta start planning. I We send something every day. There's a theme every day. And we send, you know, like a flower on Monday, candy on Tuesday, school supplies Wednesday, and uh, so on. So. I haven't even started. I gotta get busy, but this would make a great one. So I'm using my library clip to hold it closed, my gold library clip. That's how we're gonna hold the bag closed. You could do ribbon through it if you wanted to. Okay, let's stamp our birds and our branch and our sentiment. I'm gonna stamp the bird in, oh, Joanne, you have cartoons playing in the background. This morning my daughter was watching something awful. <laughs> it made the most annoying sound. This is early espresso, by the way, I think. Yep, nope, soft suede. I got a new soft suede ink pad, you guys, yay. Anyways, my daughter was watching. Oh, I totally am talking. I did that on the wrong color. Nah, turn it over. We're doing it on crumb cake. My daughter was watching something like on the Disney Channel and my husband was like, you gotta turn that off. That is so annoying. <laughs> Why are they so annoying, the cartoons and the kids' shows? All right, there's the branch. Then I'm gonna do, and I'm doing this in our early espresso also. I'm gonna do these two little offshoots like that, okay? Now I'm using classic inks. Classic ink, your regular ink works great with your blends as well. And I'm just gonna hit it, make sure it's dry. Because never fails. If it's gonna go wrong, it's gonna go wrong on Facebook Live, right? And I think that's the way it goes. And what in the world? I got the blends out and I don't even see them. Oh, hold please, let's see. Yeah, they're not there, they're missing. Dun, dun, dun. Where did they go? Did I put them on the wrong tray, maybe? Oh, here's Old Olive. Yeah, I guess I did. Okay. Sorry, no, that's Smoky Slate. Hmm, where, ah, oh, here we go. That's weird because they're missing. My root, my ones I use every day are missing. And I swear I pulled them out. This is Crumb Cake Light. That's what I'm gonna use on my branch. And really, you don't need to do anything fancy here because it's got these little lines in here. You could get fancy with some shading if you wanted to, but I don't really think you need to. And then Old Olive for the leaves. And you could get fancy here and I'll show you in just a second what I'm gonna do to make it just a little bit fancier. The blends can be fancy or they can just be, I'm gonna color this in and I, you know, I don't really know how to color fancy and it still will look good. But I'm gonna take the dark and I'm gonna go along that line right there. All right, and then I'm just gonna blend that over. The, the reason why they make you look fancy, even if you don't know how to be fancy and color and blend and do all the shading and stuff, is because they don't leave marker lines like regular markers would. You know, when you color with any kind of marker, it has those streaky marks, but these do not. These blend so nicely. Okay, now, what do we have over here? I need to make sure I get this. This is like a little, a little bud of the flower. You know what, did I have other flowers? I guess I had three. Well, we're doing two. We're just gonna do two. That'll be just fine. Take your, whoops, nope. 
Nope, we need the bullet tip for this tiny little branch. There we go. Oh, Trisha, the word party. I remember those days, girl. I know. I Why do I keep opening that to the wrong end? The little ones. I know. I know. Get stuck in your head. My husband and I still sing um, the Wiggles. That was, that was my first daughter, the Wiggles. So that was 15, 14 years ago. We still bust out in the Wiggles song sometimes. It gets in your head and you can't stop. You can't get it out. And she doesn't even remember it. She's just like, what are y'all singing? I don't even know what y'all are talking about. But we remember it. Oh, my. My husband was in the Army, and he was in Iraq when my between my daughter was 18 months old when he left. And I've got some stuff stuck here. And he came back when she was almost three. So, she, so that 18 months of time, we spent a lot of time with the Wiggles, Ellie and I. A lot of time. Maybe that's why I know them so well. Fun times. And I won't tell you that you'll miss it because you know what? It is hard when your kids are little and you, you won't miss the hard parts, but you will miss the cute little parts. I just always say I want to go back and visit when my kids were little. I don't want to go back. I want to go back and visit. You know, I don't want to go live there. <laughs> Because, boy, my kids are terrible sleepers. I don't want to visit. I mean, I don't want to go through that again, but I'd like to visit the cute stages, right? I'm sure all of you with big, grown kids will agree. All right, so I'm cutting these out with a matching framelits. Trisha is on my downline, and she has the cutest little girl. What is she, maybe two, two and a half, Trisha? She's so cute. All right, so we've got all that cut out. Let's move this out of the way. And of course, you know what I'm gonna use. Dimensionals. And, oh my goodness, I'm almost out of this sheet anyway. Let's see, we're gonna put the branch going that way. Oh, Tracy, you were in the Wiggles, the Wiggles era too, huh? Barney, you know what, Barney was before my kids. I do remember Barney because I was a kindergarten teacher. So I do remember Barney, but for my kids, we, Ellie was born kind of after Barney's prime. Um, Elmo, Elmo was real big in our house. The Wiggles, Dora, um, Toy Story. We still love Toy Story, all of us. That's one you don't ever get over. Yeah, you think about that too, Janet, huh? I know. It's hard. It's hard when your kids are little. It's so hard. But, you know, there are good parts too. There are really good parts. But good grief, I don't ever want to have those sleepless nights again. All right, so I'm just adding these little offshoots here. I didn't do a very good job cutting that one out. Ooh, that looks awful. Let's hide it. No. Mm -hmm. If we weren't on a video, I would totally redo this one, but we're just going to pretend that I didn't slip that. Okay, last thing, sentiment. We're going to use happy birthday, and we're going to stamp that. What did I stamp it? Oh, no, I did earliest. Nope, soft suede. Where did it go? If you guys were here last week, I think it was last week, my soft suede ink pad looked like it had been to war <laughs> it was one of my really old ones because i lost during our big event at on stage i apparently lost my soft suede ink pad and so i had to pull out my really old one and it was awful by the way this is the tailored tag punch it is now my preferred way to make banners i love it so easy now, of course, change the sentiment. If this is not a birthday treat, do something else. And it's kind of wide. I would probably trim that down. I don't know, that doesn't look too bad. Do thank you, um, happy day, you know. you. That's the easy part is changing the sentiment on these projects, making them um, work for whatever event you have. Tracy, you are so right. The Disney Channel is not like it used to be. It's almost 
like I'm afraid my youngest is 10 and there are a few things she watches on there and I'm kind of like mm, I don't know about that we didn't used to feel like that about Disney Channel but now good grief things are crazy I wish she was still watching Dora now she wants to watch YouTubers playing video games all day. <laughs> okay, there we go, you guys. So there's project number two. It's very easy. That gift bag punch board. If I needed to make 20 of these, I would not hesitate to use that gift bag punch board. Um, you'll have muscles in your arms when you're done because you'll have to do a lot of punching. But um, I think that once you do all that, they go together very easily. Cute, right? You guys like it? I think it's cute. Okay, last but not least, you guys, this one, we have a sneak peek. Did you notice that we have a sneak peek? I have a sneak peek for you. And here it is. The sneak peek is the shape of those dies. Do you see them? Don't look at my smear, pretend like that didn't happen. Um, okay, here we go. This is from the new catalog coming out June 4th. They are called, let me see if I can remember the right name, Stitched Nesting Label Dies. I'm about 75% sure that's the right name. <laughs> Something like that, Nesting Stitched Labels. Um, they are awesome. So we have done a couple of things like this. Um, our, our stitch to rectangle framelits have this double stitch where it's, it does the stitching on the inside and the stitching on the outside so that if you cut a window, um, the, the negative space will have that stitching around it. And something I wanna point out about these dies that I am extremely happy about is that they are thick and hardy. If you do a lot of die cutting like I do, you'll know that if you have to cut out, so maybe for a class to go, I have to cut out 80 rect stitched rectangles. Those stitched rectangles are delicate. They're narrow and delicate and they will only cut through one layer. Um, these are different. These are definitely thicker and hardier. These are more like our stitched shape framelits. The one that has the, cir the four circles, the four squares, and the four ovals, they're thick and hardy and they cut beautifully. So you're gonna see me use the heck out of these. Um, my class to go, the Flowering Desert class, I use these a bunch. And I have something simmering on the back burner right now where I used a bunch of these. I'm not sure how we're gonna use it that those projects yet, but it's coming. Um, so anyway, these are new sneak peek. They will be available June 4th, unless you wanna buy the starter kit, you guys, in May. You can fill your starter kit with everything that we got in the pre-order. Stampin' Up! gives us this huge PDF of product, products from the new catalog that we can order in May. And if you are jonesing for one of these and you just don't wanna wait and you've been thinking about a starter kit, if you do it in May, you can fill it with all this brand new stuff that customers can't order on a customer order. Okay, just putting it out there, so that's that. Love them, you're gonna love them, I promise. They're really good, hardy, sturdy, strong dies. Okay, let's make the box. So we've made an envelope, we've made two bags, and now we're gonna make a box. Yes, you can make a box with the uh, gift bag punch board. I keep wanting to call it the envelope punch board. So down here um, on the PDF it says that this is six by 11, and you need to use the medium gift bag score line, okay? You'll see what I mean. This is actually a really easy way to make boxes. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just score that horizontal score line. Um, if you want different size boxes, there are different size boxes, just Google it. I'm telling you, there is so much information out there on how to use these tools, you don't have to guess. It's out there. Okay, so I said, what did I say? Medium score line. So we're gonna use the medium. Is that right? Let me double check. I don't think that's right. Is that right? I'm double, I'm, I'm second guessing myself. Hmm. I think, no, that's wrong. I think we need to use the small. Let's do the small. If it's wrong, we'll redo it. All right, so do the small that uh, for a small gift bag. Oops, you gotta punch first. Slide it over to that line that you made and punch. 
This time do the side line, but don't do all that business in the middle that we do for the bag. Just the side line, slide it and punch. Small, see how we're going back and forth? And slide and punch. Yeah, maybe it was medium. Now I have all this extra cardstock left over. And punch. Okay, let's see. Hold on. Mm, no, I don't know. Well, that's right. I don't know. Maybe my length of cardstock is too long. We'll fix it. We'll fix it. All right, so slide. And did we punch? Nope, we didn't punch. All right, now flip it over. And you don't need to score anything else. You're just going to punch where all of those score lines are, okay? Punch, punch, punch. And you got, you we're going to need to do the horizontal line here first, which you probably should do before you punch. All right, so here's the horizontal line. All the way across. Okay, now the thing that I was, you're probably like, what in the world is she talking about? This little flap right here is too fat. It needs to be skinnier. So that means that the length of our paper should not be 11 inches. It should be 10 and a half. So let's change that. Who knows what happens when you're watching Days of Our Lives and typing up your PDF at the same time. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fold them all in. You can use this as your bone folder if you want because that's pretty much what it is. Um, we're gonna cut those ends off. All right, now let's do these in the middle. Hello, everybody. Yes, I'm glad I could blow your mind, Donna. I know, I'm telling you, this this punch board, out of all the punch boards that are out there, I feel like this one is really the most versatile and the easiest to use. All right, so here's that end. We're gonna trim this, we're gonna just cut that off. And this time I'm doing it straight because we're gonna take our corner rounder on our triple corner punch and we're gonna slide this in here. You have to fold that in slide it and punch. I'm gonna round these corners. Let's get that out of there. And, oh, behave. There we go. There we go. So now we've got it all rounded. See how that is? And now we're just gonna fold it all up like a box. And that's gonna go in and those, that's gonna go out. See how that is, so easy. Okay, so get your adhesive. You wanna use a really strong adhesive. Um, tear and tape. If you like liquid adhesive, go ahead and use your liquid adhesive. I'm gonna put adhesive on the outside of these two center tabs. Now, you have to watch this when you put it together. Because these are rounded, it's not going to line up even with the table. If I make it even with the table, see how it's leaning over. So you're gonna have to look straight up, look at it from right above and make sure that it's straight up and down. And then come over here to our other sides. Look, I forgot to punch that one. You guys are probably yelling at me, you forgot to punch it. It's all right. That's all right. Okay, so now these go in that there might stick down these go in and this one I like to keep this one oh come on <laughs> this one on the outside this is a lot like the T box that I did um, where we're gonna slide it behind the thing that we're gonna put right here I did not do a very good job at hearing these okay let's make the little tag that we can put on there I'm using this beautiful flower that I am not remembering the name all that you are I used it for my stamp and blends club and it was so fun um, it really is beautiful and it's going away too and it's relatively inexpensive I think isn't it like $16 I have to double check it's on the sheet now I'm just going to stamp a little bit here in the corner okay 
just a little bit like that. And I didn't even do, let's look at my other one. I did even further over with that one so that I have the leaves. This time I don't even, I didn't even get the leaves on there. So I'm gonna just color it less, which is fine. Now I'm using Daffodil Delight blends. You definitely have to heat set your ink. Every time I use Daffodil Delight, if I do not heat set my ink, it um, smears. So make sure you just really let it sit there for a while or heat set it with your heat tool, okay? Michelle, my back burner idea. Okay, here's my back burner idea. I usually do do bingo in May, you guys. Those of you that have been with me for a while, I usually do bingo. And I really wanna do bingo this month, but I am just having a really hard time fitting it into our schedule. So that's what my back burner idea is. I, I have projects designed, I'm ready. I just have to, to nail down a date um, to do the online bingo. The It's gonna have to just be online this year. We have a bazillion kid activities going on right now and I just, so that's my back burner. I want to do bingo, it's fun and I think it's gonna be towards the end of the month and it's going to be featuring all the new papers and ribbons that I have. It's gonna be kind of like a catalog sneak peek bingo. All right, so if you like playing stamp and bingo with me on Facebook, keep your eyes peeled. I'm dragging my feet on it because of our scheduling. Okay, light daffodil delight. Now I'm gonna go in with my dark. Oh no, I don't wanna use that end. I'm gonna go in with my dark and I'm gonna add dark daffodil delight everywhere that the petals would be overlapping each other. Okay, so imagine where that would be. And then of course, along the bottom. I have this one out too. Let's put that, switch it over. Now take your light Daffodil Delight. Susan, I know you're so sweet. You always play bingo with me. I know, I've gotta get it, I've got to nail it down because we're running out of time before I can get things in the mail by the end of the month. Okay, so see how I blended all of that in? And of course, you know, use whatever color you want. But I chose, I like this Daffodil Delight with the Balmy Blue. I can't believe I didn't get any of the leaves on here. If you're gonna do the leaves, like I did in my sample, use Old Olive. Old Olive looks beautiful. Well, I guess I could do a little bit right there. Let's see. Oh yeah, we took them back over here, remember? To the other tray. Now I'm gonna just take this old olive and just kind of add it in. <laughs> Michelle, okay, so you guys want me to do bingo, huh? So Amy, stamp and bingo is exactly what it sounds like. We play bingo. And I give away, pri the prizes are stamping up things. And usually this time of the year, they're all new things coming in the new catalog. Um, and in between games, we make projects, we stamp. It's really fun. It's really, really fun. And I do it on Facebook Live. Now I'm taking my chalk marker and just coloring in these little things in the middle. Um, it is really, it is a lot of fun. And I just, I know, I know I need to do it. You guys are, you're motivating me. We just play bingo on Facebook Live. I mail you bingo cards and I mail you make and takes ahead of time. And then there's a date that we we come back to Facebook. We have a um, private Facebook group and we play bingo. And then the winners, you know, comment bingo when you make bingo there in the comments, just like you guys are doing right now. And then I mail you the prizes. It is fun. It is a lot of fun. And it's fun in person too. Although it stresses me out because I want everybody to win. <laughs> Okay, let's get this guy back together. Now we've got these two beautiful stitched. Something is wrong here. I think I put this one a little bit too forward. Let's see, there we go. Let's see. Hmm. Hmm. There we go. All right, now to keep that down, we're gonna put this on with dimensionals. It is a lot of fun, Wendy. It's fun, but again, I always get kind of sweaty because I want everybody to win and I start worrying and I start sweating and 
like, oh, I, you know, I want her to win, but then she's she won and she didn't win. And I know <laughs> it's the kindergarten teacher in me. Everything has to be fair. All right, now I'm gonna put those dimensionals down below like that, right in the middle, so that this slides on like that. And the last thing we're gonna do is add a gingham, a Knight of Navy gingham bow. Now you guys, next week, next week, the schedule is off. The schedule's gonna be off for a while, probably until school starts again. <laughs> We're going to the beach for Mother's Day. So next week there will be no Facebook Friday, but there will be a Facebook Wednesday, two o'clock central. I'm not sure exactly what, what it's gonna be like, but I will be live on Wednesday at two o'clock, okay? There we go, there's our box. How cute and fun is that? Let's, let's review. Class is almost over. Let's review what we made. We made a gift bag with a flap over the front. We made a report card envelope with a cute little gift card holder inside. We made a gift box. And on Tuesday, we made a beautiful traditional gift bag with the Climbing Orchid uh, stamp set. Uh, you can find that video. It's linked on today's post if you didn't get to watch it on Tuesday. So have I convinced you that you need this in your life? This gift bag punch board and it's small it's easy to store and it makes bags envelopes and boxes and it's only twenty dollars it's really cheap twenty dollars i mean in salmon up catalog that's pretty cheap now you guys know that if you use the host code by monday i'll send you not that one these three make and takes in the mail for free next week um you have to put your order in by monday at midnight and it has to be at least $30, and you have to use the host code. If your order is over $150, then you get stamp and rewards. Don't use the host code. You will get, you will not get your stamp and rewards if you use that host code, and I want you to get those stamp and rewards. If you're wondering what stamp and rewards are, you can look back here in the catalog on page 224. If you spend $150, you get 10%, so then you get $15 in free product and so on. So if your order is over $150, make sure to not use the host code. I will still see your order and I will still send you the make and takes for free, okay? Um, okay, so get the PDF, go check out classes, check out the In Color Club, paper and ribbon share signups are right here. Um, what else did I need to tell you? I think that's it. Wednesday, Facebook Live next week, starter kit. If you want new stuff, you can order that in your starter kit this month and join my awesome team. Check, check, check. I think I told you everything. All right, you guys, today was a lot of fun. Fingers crossed that my Facebook leaves my video alone and doesn't delete it since we didn't have internet problems today. I will come back in a little while and update with all the links. I gotta go run pick my daughter up from school. Um, and then I will answer any questions that I might have missed. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate it. And I will see you next Wednesday. Bye, guys. Have a great weekend.